couple of different stages. Estimate one of the capacitors so large that the unit gain frequency falls below the other four. Other way, a better way is to use uh, pulse plating. That is, you connect a capacitor across the second stage, which is assumed to have a negative gain by the common source. Okay. So, you We know that the alpha function of this number, the quality is only A, will have a non DC gain. We know what it is, it's just the perfect OTC gain of the non DC. Okay. Now, if you pass, And note that in this case, I have the poles are at minus P1 and minus P2. This is the preferred notation for me. One plus as by P1 and one plus as by P2 in the denominator. Okay, P1 and P2 are positive. The idea here is that CC will be out the same order of magnitude as C1 and C2. Okay, in this particular case, that may not be true in a common source amplifier because CC is the CC. It will be known by the CC. It is not going to be true. Okay, okay, it is not going to be true. 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 So, when CC and C1 and C2 are similar, then this order will definitely be true over both the other terms. Okay. 
Fine. Remember. Okay. So this is of a non important amplifier of Okay, I'll show how to. So uh, these are uh, these are just the basics of the op amp. Now, if you have a circuit, the zero did not exist. Okay, that is the transfer function has just two poles. Right? Then we know that the second pole. That you have an equation in CC, that's the only unknown, so you can solve for it one way or the other. In this case, it's just uh, you get a
Okay. I'll come to the other even bigger advantage later. Okay. <coughs> This is So you get a much higher bandwidth using this. It's not only that you have you use a smaller capacitor, the performance of the amplifier will be a lot better if you use this one printing form. Cases, the goal is the same. Thank you. 
So, Payam could be anything. They'll be asked to uh, ask for some value of Payam. Okay? I mean, in general, I mean, this also could be difficult to solve, but in this particular case, it's not difficult. Phase lag due to the dominant pole will be minus 90 degrees because again you are talking about uh, cases where uh, the loop gain is quite large. Okay, so we are talking about in this case sine inverse of thousand, right? So it is minus 90. So this. How much is that? 5.7 degrees. So, so earlier we just pretended that the zero was not there and threw all that 14 degrees into P2. Okay. So, this time was uh, P2 was 14 degrees. Okay. So, it gave you 1 by 4. So, now we are going to by 2 should be 4 by 4.
Why I have to do this? I have the quadratic equation from yesterday. There, somewhere in place of 4, you have to put 7. Okay. What are the equations? So, what answer do you get? Yeah, it appears to be 1.8. You need a larger value of CC. Okay. So this means that the bandwidth also has reduced, but it's not as bad as throwing 4 nanofarads at the output of the first amplifier. Okay. So you should be able to calculate all these things by yourself. Is this okay? I mean, even including the zero, zero. The feedback factor, one by. Okay, so it will simply add, subtract some amount from the phase margin, rather add some amount to the phase margin. Okay, so the amount of phase line you can have from the second pole will be reduced because of the contribution from the zero. One thing you notice here is that, what is the smallest value of k you can have? Problem or no? There won't be feedback. No, there is very much feedback. Why ground? Not ground, it's connected to the output of the. Can say that what is the phase lag like contributed by this? 45 degrees. So obviously, if you have already contributed 45 degrees, you have like 104 degrees. Exactly. So I have to design GM. I have to design an op-amp. If I had GM2 to be 5 times GM1, then possibly you could do this, right? Or maybe 10 times GM1 or something.
and if I have gained one or gained one hundred, and the worst case is gained one for this, right? So if you design it for gain hundred, and then somebody makes an amplifier gain one, the base margin will be too small. There is no way to fix that. On the other hand, if you design it for gain one, and then someone uses it for gain hundred, it is perfectly okay, isn't it? I'll uh, elaborate on this. So. And in an IC, each uh, instance is different. Okay, if you want a certain gain, you will design the compensation capacitor for that particular gain and use it. Okay, when someone makes a ready-made amplifier and gives it to you, the compensation capacitor CC is inside the op amp. Okay. What is known as internally compensated op amp. Okay. You had the op amp tips where CC is already inside, so that you don't have to do anything. It's very easy for the user. Now, if you do that, you have to make sure that it works for all kinds of amplifiers, right? Specific to this particular case. Okay. Minus two seventy degrees. I showed uh, an op amp structure with two stages, both have the same GM and so on. And we calculated some value of CC for which it will have 76 degrees base margin, including the zero. Okay. So this will work perfectly fine. If you design an amplifier of gain 10, the base margin of the loop gain will be 76 degrees. And uh, that means that the step response of the closed loop. Thank you. 
What happens to the phase response? No, no, what is the phase curve, phase of loop gain? Same, it will remain exactly the same. What happens to the phase response curve? If you design something for Okay. So if you design it for a small feedback fraction, it will not it will work for even smaller feedback fractions, but not for larger ones. Okay. That is if you design it for some feedback fraction, but if you have more feedback, it could be that it will become unstable. Okay, so that's what this is saying. Value of looping. Now it could be that you know. Realize amplifiers of smaller gain, that is higher. Is it fine? So, if you are making a general purpose op amp, okay, which can be sold to anyone who knows what kind of amplifiers people will make with it, what is the value of K for which you would uh, design the value of CC? 1. Okay. But it's not the best. Okay. I'll show you why. So, if you are just given an op amp assignment and uh, you are not even told what amplifier it will be used for, you just have to assume.
software game, right? So, So in this case, loop gain LFS simply equals of the op amp. Okay. So what you have to do is to make sure that op amp has its uh, And it's not in any feedback loop. In compute, if you do put that op amp in unity feedback, that unity game frequency of op amp will become the unity loop gain. Okay, so that's why the op amp unity gain frequency is specified. Okay, and And I make a unity gain amplifier using that. What will be the loop gain? Same. Exactly the same. So, loop gain will be. Right. And what will be the closed loop bandwidth? Approximately omega u of the op amp. This product This is 
bomb. We have designed an op amp whose, uh, whose gain is predominantly of first order behavior. Okay, so that's why if you take this and put it in, uh, uh, I mean, configure it as non inverting amplifiers with different values of gain. So, again, the unity gain frequency is given, and from that, if you know that, you will be able to tell what bandwidth you should get for what gain. Okay. So, if you mean, if you have an op-amp like you get only 100 kilowatts bandwidth, okay? So, that's why I said this method of uh, compensating for unity gain is not the best. It's just robust. It makes sure that it's stable. But if you realize highly it is critical, then you should use uh, okay, that will be more optimal. Is this fine? And in general, this method of frequency compensation, we know the unity of the frequency, you just have a single mode. And all other axioms, like all other extra poles and zeros, are beyond the unity loop gain frequency. This is known as Okay, and all these things that come later, these are known as non dominant poles and Uh, given any circuit, you should be able to analyze the loop gain. Uh, keep in mind that so far I've been only taking examples of this non inverting amplifier. Okay. So the loop gain is A of S by K. There's no such thing for a general circuit. You have to take the circuit one of the nodes heavily or by identifying. Questions on any of these things? So, this is how we have done at the control source level. Uh, hopefully, by the end of the course, we will get to the transistor level implementation of the offhand. Okay. Any questions on any aspect of negative feedback? Make sure that. Right? The sales margin is sort of a proxy for uh, margin, robustness of uh, the system, okay? It's not foolproof. You can actually design uh, systems which have a sales margin of... Uh, but generally, we assume that's not the case. We have a dominant pole type of behavior, and things will go uh, only downhill. That is, So after this, there should be hopefully no confusion about calculating the values of whatever component it is that will. Okay. Any feedback network has to obey this. 